Hello, and welcome to CRPS Contender, my complex regional pain syndrome education channel. Today we are taking another step down our journal journey, in which we explore published academic articles and scientific papers about CRPS so that we have a better understanding of what evidence we have about complex regional pain syndrome. Today we are looking at a meta-analysis that is very long, so I have broken it into several parts, each part representing a major topic in the paper. The paper we will be discussing today is Neuropsychological Changes in Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. This article was published in January 2020 in Chronic Pain Hurts the Brain, The Pain Physician's Perspective. CRPS is a poorly understood chronic pain condition of multifactorial origin. CRPS involves sensory, motor, and autonomic symptoms, as well as reduced attention to CRPS-affected extremities reminiscent of hemispatial neglect. However, this neglect-like framework is not sufficient to characterize the range of higher cognitive functions that can be altered in CRPS. This comprehensive literature review synthesizes evidence of neuropsychological changes in CRPS in the context of potential central mechanisms to the disorder, constituting three distinct but not independent groups, distorted body representation, deficits in lateralized spatial cognition, and impairment of non-spatially lateralized higher cognitive functions, consistent with a broader disruption to parietal function beyond merely what could be considered neglect-like. Now that bolded section has some pretty intense language in it and we will get to exploring all of it, but in today's video we are just going to be focused on distorted body representation. The previous framework that was being used in CRPS as to why we pay less attention to a particular area of the body, the CRPS affected area, was hemispatial neglect. This is usually something that occurs after a stroke. Even though you haven't necessarily lost feeling on a particular side of your body, you are paying less attention, you have less awareness of what is going on in that side of space. There is a growing body of evidence that suggests that despite the absence of brain lesions, people with CRPS can present with neuropsychological symptoms in a similar manner. This article provides a comprehensive critical review of the evidence for altered neuropsychological functions in CRPS. The authors conducted a literature search using the PubMed database for articles including keywords regarding complex regional pain syndrome published in English between 1995 and 2019. They limited the scope of this review to studies on adults. The authors concluded that the currently used neglect-like framework is insufficient for characterizing the variety of neuropsychological changes shown by people with CRPS, and they advocate the role of parietal cortical networks in the emergence of these symptoms. The parietal lobe is the upper rear part of your head. When you stand up and bang your head on something and you slap your hand to cover your skull, that's usually the parietal lobe what you're protecting. If you're going on this journal journey with me, I'm going to assume you know the clinical features of CRPS. So I'm going to fly right through this slide. You've got sensory, autonomic, and motor abnormalities. The breadth of clinical manifestations and their possible combinations means that CRPS is a multifaceted and heterogeneous disease. Peripheral nervous system mechanisms cannot fully account for the fact that CRPS symptoms persist long after the inflammatory response should have resolved itself. Patients also show maladaptive changes in the central nervous system, leading to central sensitization, where spinal cord pain neurons become hyper-responsive to the input they receive from the peripheral nervous system, increasing pain signaling to the cortex even in the absence of such input. A shift from inhibition towards facilitation of pain signaling was also found in the individual pain modulation system in those with CRPS. Peripheral and central nervous system mechanisms are not contradictory, and they can interact to produce clinical signs of CRPS. These central changes don't only occur in the spinal cord, but also at higher cortical levels. Altered body representation is among the earliest and best characterized of the neuropsychological changes. This manifests as patients self-reporting disturbed perceptions, ownership of, and feelings towards the affected limb, as well as erroneous estimations of size, position, and movement of that limb. Up to 60% of patients reported feeling loss of ownership, lack of recognition, or awareness of their CRPS-affected limb. 
Neglect is an attention deficit affecting the hemispace, one half of the space on the side of your body, on the opposite side of a brain lesion. Early research in CRPS considered reports of the affected limb not being part of the patient's body and feeling dead as cognitive neglect symptoms. The authors argue that these symptoms are better characterized as a disturbance of the mental representation of the body and more closely resemble a somatognosia, which is a lost sense of ownership in one's limb. These disturbances are consistent with distorted body representation, including the affected limb being larger or smaller, misshapen or heavier relative to its true size, shape, and weight. Negative feelings towards the affected limb, such as disgust, or hatred, or a desire to amputate. A mismatch between sensations of the affected limb and its appearance. Lacking parts of the limb from the mental representation. And poor awareness of the affected limb's position. The severity of self-reported body perception disturbance is correlated with the impaired ability for precision of touch, which is linked to reorganization of primary and secondary cortical maps of the affected limb. This suggests that subjective body representation distortion could be accompanied by changes in the brain. Several of the studies in this meta-analysis use limb laterality recognition tasks, which require speeded identification of left or right limbs from pictures of hands or feet in different postures or at different angles of rotation from the upright position. It's thought that the limb laterality recognition task involves mentally rotating the pictured limb to match its current position of one's own limb, or vice versa. CRPS patients were revealed to be less accurate and slower in determining the laterality of images corresponding to their painful limb. It took them longer to recognize pictures of limbs presented in their affected side of space as well. The effect occurred for images of both hands and feet, regardless of whether participants had CRPS in their upper or lower limbs. These responses were specific to images of body parts and not to other stimuli, like letters. A different set of testing revealed that CRPS patients rely on visual cues in addition to proprioceptive ones when estimating the position of their affected limb in space. CRPS patients were proven to be able to integrate visual, auditory, and tactile information with their proprioceptive information from their body into the body representation. However, it was determined that the representation of the body is likely more malleable, with more pronounced updating on the unaffected side. CRPS patients did retain the normal ability to perceive illusory ownership of an artificial body part, despite their own decreased sense of ownership of their own affected limb. They did have intact multisensory integration. Because of this, a deficit in multisensory integration does not seem to be a plausible explanation for the distorted body representation. Patients with CRPS were less susceptible to an artificial finger illusion compared to healthy controls when only proprioceptive information was available. A specific impairment in integrating proprioceptive information, which is where you are in space, with other sensory input, could drive these distortions. Although proprioception itself might be altered in CRPS, it can still be integrated with any other available tactile information and result in normal performance on a multisensory bodily illusion. This further supports the conclusion that people with CRPS have intact multisensory integration. In summary, this first section of the meta-analysis reveals that CRPS patients consistently report symptoms pertaining to altered body representation, including a lack of a sense of ownership of the limb, distorted perception of affected parts of the body, and negative feelings about the affected limb. Not only does this information come from self-reported measures, but this is in agreement with experimental tests of body representation. Body representation relies on dynamic integration of visual, tactile, and proprioceptive information. Multisensory integration does seem to be intact in people with CRPS, and thus it cannot account for their distorted body representations. People with CRPS are able to update the representation of their body, but this process might differ between the affected and unaffected sides. Greater updating of bodily representations suggests that these representations may be less stable in people with CRPS. Deficits in systematically measured aspects of body representation 
mostly appear to arise when people with CRPS have to rely on proprioception alone, and additional sensory cues are either missing or incongruent with the other senses or motor commands. A possible explanation for this is that proprioceptive information from the affected limb is not reliable. Disrupted reliability of proprioception in people with CRPS could mean that the weighting of other senses such as vision, touch, and hearing is stronger to compensate for this disruption. There is consistent evidence that multisensory integration in CRPS is intact and it cannot explain the distorted body representation. Higher level mechanisms might contribute to these distortions. We will dive deeper into their argument in the following sections. For now, this is where we will close this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you would like to contribute to my living expenses, my Patreon is listed below. Thank you very much to my patrons, Chase and Emily Malcontent. If you would like to examine this paper for yourself, it is linked in the description, along with access to the slides and the notes that I took for this presentation. Hope to see you next time.